Hi everyone, welcome to this class, Management Information Systems, DIT 1308. I'm Solomon Chiriat from Mount Kenya University. Uh, during this particular lesson, we shall focus on the aspect of approaches to information systems and a brief on management levels within the organization. Uh, in relation to approaches to information systems, we have talked about introduction to IS before and we have talked about uh, information systems uh, being within the IT, being within the organization and also within the management within the organization. So when we approach or when we look at information systems, we look at three approaches. We look at uh, technical field, we look at behavior, behavioral uh, field and social technical uh, field which is basically a combination of technical and behavioral uh, fields. Why are we talking about approaches to information systems? We want to understand if information systems can be defined within a single uh, field or domain. For example, is it for computer science alone? Is it for the technical people alone? So that is why we want to uh, look into that. So uh, when we are talking about information systems, we realize that IS or information systems is actually a multidisciplinary field. It actually encompasses both technical behavioral uh, fields, which we can always combine them as social uh, technical. So it is never a single uh, theory or it is never related to a single field or perspect uh, perspective. Information systems will always uh, deal with several uh, fields, that is all the technical fields, behavioral fields and social technical uh, fields, which we have said combines the technical and behavioral uh, fields. In this diagram, this is just a diagram to show us clearly how we can relate to information systems. The management science, computer science and operation research areas form the technical field or field we also have the behavioral field, which is a psychology. We have economics and sociology fields. These are different fields. We have the technical and the behavioral uh, fields. All this, all this can be used, or all this can be used to describe information systems. Within information, within computer science, within management science, psychology, all these particular fields or areas can be able to use information systems. So we cannot at the end of the day say uh, computer science only uh, relates to information systems. We also have behavioral uh, approaches that we can describe uh, information systems. For example, information systems need changes. Information systems need maintenance. So we need people coming in to understand the the information systems and therefore we need this particular behavioral uh, fields. Looking at these uh, three fields, that is the technical, uh, behavioral and social technical approaches, we have the technical field which actually uh, looks into three uh, fields which is our management science, computer science and operations uh, research. So this technical field, field usually emphasizes on uh, mathematically based uh, normative models that study information system or to study information systems as well as physical technology and formal capabilities of this particular system. So emphasis here is on technical, uh, technical approach. Emphasis is on technical approach where we look at models, uh, mathematical and normative models to describe information systems. And we also don't forget that we need the physical technology to describe uh, the information system. Therefore, we can look at three areas or three fields, three fields of studies, three fields of uh, specialization, management science, computer science and operations research to actually capture this particular concept of uh, mathematical models, normative models and physical technology to describe information systems. We also have the behavioral approach of uh, looking into uh, 
information systems or trying to understand information systems, we have this behavioral approach, which usually comes into cost context when we are looking at psychology, we are looking at economics, we are looking at uh, uh, sociology. These three allow us to understand how we can be able to relate with changes within the information system, uh, design issues, rules within the organization, the standard operating procedures within the organization, so that we can be able to blend in the behavior of a particular domain into an information uh, system. So basically, this, uh, when you talk of behavioral approach to information system, this is concerned with the development and long-term maintenance of information systems trying to understand this particular information system, trying to bring in uh, changes within the organizations and, of course, transforming those particular changes or bringing in those changes into the information system itself. So uh, this emphasizes on issues like strategic business integration within the organization. We have the design, the implementation and utilization of such business uh, rules within the organization. So it is very critical to also remember that this behavioral approach can also be used to describe or bring in information systems or to understand information systems within the organization based on uh, psychology, based on economics and sociology. Uh, the two, that is technical and behavioral, cannot just work singly and therefore we need to combine the two and therefore, we say that we can talk of socio-technical approach. That the social part, of course, is based on uh, the behavioral approach. So we can combine both the technical approach and behavioral, behavioral approach so that we don't have a system that is purely technological and leaves out behavior or social, as the social concept of uh, the environment. So, Social technical approach will try to avoid the technological approach to information system and of course bring in some social aspect within the, uh, within the information system. So therefore, we can say that it, it means that uh, the technology must be changed, of course, based on the changing procedures within the, the organization. And of course, we have also mentioned that these changes must be blended within the information system. So uh, it means that uh, technology must be changed and designed in such a way that it fits the organizational and individual needs, organizational procedures, objectives, and so on. And of course, organization and uh, individual must also change. We must be able to change uh, naturally as human beings, for example. Based on the new changes that are in, we must be able to adapt to those particular uh, changes. Whether we are going to learn or to be to undergo some training and so on, so that we can be able to uh, uh, blend in with the new changes. So it is important to note that this is very critical, the social technical approach, which combines all the three approaches to info, uh, that is which combines all the approaches to information uh, systems. So remember that we have the technical approach and behavioral approach but we cannot focus on one. We need to combine the, both the technical and behavioral approach so that we have this socio-technical uh, approach. Uh, we also have, uh, when we are talking about uh, information systems, it is very important to discuss the role of IS in any organization. Remember, we, are, we have talked about organization, we have talked about uh, information technology, we have talked about management. When we talk of uh, the role of IS within the organization, remember we have the, the technology part and we also have the uh, business part of the organization. And of course there is usually an interdependence between the operating procedures or rules within the organization and the information system which we look at in terms of our networks, in terms of database, in terms of software, hardware, and so on. So the information, of course, the information system must depend on, or there is an interdependence between 
the information system and the organizational structure, organizational uh, uh, standard operating procedures, organizational uh, culture, politics, and the people within the organization. Talking of uh, that role, we can always say that there is a growing interdependence between organizational business strategy, which we have said is based on standard operating procedures, the rules, and so on, on one hand, and AIS, which is basically the, uh, the components, which is uh, hardware, software, the networks, and so on, and the databases. So anything that changes within the business strategy or the organization must always also reflect within the, uh, the IS platform where the IS is uh, uh, implemented. So that's why we say the changes in strategy or rules or procedures require, very critical, require changes in the, uh, the hardware or the software. So if there is a new rule within the organization, for example, then we must be able to update that new rule within the system so that it must be able to capture any information system, whether it is uh, within the bank, within the uh, learning institution, whether it is within the hospital, and so on, whichever domain, whether when there is a new change, we must be able to implement the new change within the information system uh, platform. Otherwise, the change will just be in the organization, but is not being reflected in the important uh, component within the organization, that is the information system. So any changes must always be reflected within that particular IS. So it is very critical to take note of that. Now, while we talk of uh, management levels uh, in organizations, as we had uh, mentioned earlier, we mentioned that we have th three levels. We have the senior managers, we have the middle uh, managers or middle level managers, we have the operational uh, operational uh, level managers. When you talk of these particular levels, it is very critical to also think of the information system. Remember the information system is holding our organization. We can say it is holding our organization virtually because everything that we do in the information system should re reflect our behaviors within the, uh, everything we do, we do within the information system should reflect what we do within the organization. So it is very critical to understand the structure of the organization. It is very critical to understand how we can implement those uh, rules within each level and implement them or bring them in to the system such that we have the strategic managers or the senior managers getting their piece in terms of the information system. We have the tactical managers or the middle level managers getting their piece within the information system. And we have the, uh, the basic users or operation managers within the organization also getting their piece within the uh, information system. All these people will get different, uh, different results when they are doing uh, different tasks. So we expect the users to get some reports based on the levels that they are in. So always remember the three uh, levels within the organization. When we talk of uh, these management levels, we can relate to this particular uh, small diagram. We have at the top level, we have the senior managers who deal with strate uh, strategic decisions or long-term decisions. We have the long-term decisions being made at the top level. We have the middle level, where we talk of the, the tactical managers, talking about uh, decisions that relate to implementation of uh, the long-term decisions. And we also have the operational managers, who ensure that daily activities go as planned. At the end of the day, all these managers work within the same single organization, and they always want to achieve some objective that is related to the same uh, organization. When we talk about this, uh, these levels within the organization, it is important to understand the types of information. 
we have two main uh, types of information that is uh, unstructured and structured information. Now this depends, the type of information depends on the level of management within which the, uh, the manager is within the organization. So uh, to make appropriate decisions, strategic, ta tactical and operational, remember the, the levels, the different levels of managers need the right kind of information. That's, we have just said that every level will have their own kind of uh, outputs depending on their level. Now we have unstructured information. This is usually at the top level for the top level managers, the strategic uh, level um, managers. So unstructured information is usually summarized, less current and uh, highly subjective. Highly subjective. It covers a broad range of facts because it is capturing data from all the departments, whether it is uh, uh, manufacturing, whether it is sales and marketing and so on. Remember these are the people who are making decisions for the future and therefore we can get unstructured information because we also get information from within and outside the organization. So we can get the information within the platform we are in or the environment, our domain, but we can also get uh, other information from the outside, for example, government and so on. So remember the government is outside the organization. So that's an outside uh, element within the organization. So we can get this unstructured information because we are not basing our inputs only from the, from the domain that we are in. So unstructured information is usually used by the top level uh, management. And it is concerned with events outside, and we have mentioned that, outside as well as inside the organization. So that is the first type of, uh, type of uh, inf that is information. We also have structured information, which is usually detailed, more current, and not subjective. It can, go, uh, it can be able to cover a narrow range of facts. And in most of the time, we talk about lower level managers. This information is very specific to a particular uh, department. For example, maybe finance, maybe human resource, maybe sales, maybe marketing, and so on. And we have said that, we have also said that it is concerned with the events within the organization. So this is basically, we are looking at a small domain. So unlike unstructured, which, we are, which is getting its inputs from the outside, while well, this one is getting the inputs mostly from within the organization. So uh, we look at the operational level managers using structured information that is generated directly by the information system based on the data that was keyed in within the information system. Then we have semi-structured. Now semi-structured is for the tactical managers or the middle level managers who are within uh, the organization, so they can be using some form of structured uh, information uh, from the top level and also from the lower level. I, they can be using unstructured information from the upper level or the top level and structured information from the lower level. So this makes up what we call semi-structured because sometimes also these uh, managers can get inputs from outside the organization. As we shall be looking at the types of information systems, we shall relate why we need uh, or why we talk about structured, why we talk about unstructured and so on. It is usually based on the type of or the kind of inputs that are coming into the information system. Uh, let's look at uh, types of information systems. We have six of them. We have six types. The transaction processing uh, systems, knowledge work systems, office automation, MIS, management information system, and decision support systems and executive support system. Each of these, very important, works or operates within a specific level within the organization. Remember, we, are, we have talked about the top level, the middle level, and the lower 
level. So we have the uh, strategic team at the top, we have the tactical team and the operational team at the lower level. Each of these people require some type of information system, depending on what they do, depending on what their objective within the organization is. For example, the top level managers, they talk about long term, long term decision making. That is, uh, they, they make decisions that affect the, uh, a wide duration of time, maybe 10 years, 15 years, and so on, within the organization. So we can say that in the next 10 years, we want the organization to be at this particular level. That is a strategic level decision. Now, at the lower level, the operational manager can say, uh, today we made sales of uh, product X, and this was the total amount collected. And comparing with X and Y, we can say that X is selling better than Y. Those are small decisions within the sales division at the lower level of the organization. So these particular systems have been categorized or based on their level of operation. Remember, it is one single operating, uh, it is one single information system, but at each level, we can break down the single information system into several uh, types. So the TPS, the transaction processing uh, system, is actually the one that we interact with most of the day as users of a particular system. We key in, uh, we key in information, we, that is we key in data about sales of a particular item. If it is a supermarket, you go buy sugar, you go buy a book, and so on. That point of sale system there will actually perform uh, some transactions some transactions for product, for a particular product, if it is a book, and so on. Then, at the end of the day, the person who is seated there is basically, we can say that the person who is seated there is currently using a transaction processing system. So basically, it is a computerized system that performs and records the daily routine transactions. Daily routine transactions. Every time you log into a portal, you perform some tasks Basically, you are basically within a TPS where you are keying in some data, you are keying in some, or uh, you are keying in some values and so on for computations and so on. So basically, at the lower level, you are doing some uh, routine transactions so that the business can grow. These small, small transactions are the ones that make up uh, uh, the business transactions to, to be large every day. So that at the end of the day, the top level, the middle level can make decisions based on what is happening at the operational level. So if you are at a bank, there is a teller who says you have deposited this amount. That what is happening there is basically transactions. And therefore we can classify such as a transaction processing uh, system. At the end of the day, we shall uh, compute all the transactions and say that uh, in this branch, in this branch, in this branch, there was a total, uh, there was a total of uh, uh, this amount for product X collected based on the single transactions. We also have the knowledge level information systems. Basically, knowledge level uh, information system or uh, the knowledge level information systems are broken down into two. Uh, the knowledge level information systems are broken into two. We have the knowledge work systems and office automation systems within the organization. This level, the knowledge level information uh, level, or the knowledge level within the organization is usually silent. It doesn't come out, uh, uh, it is not well uh, said by so many people. It is usually silent within the organization. These are people who do research within the organization, especially trying to generate knowledge about a particular uh, product, about a particular uh, service, and so on. In knowledge work systems, you basically do some research and basically work on 
a particular product, understand it, trying to understand it, and trying to make sense out of it so that you can be able to maybe improve on it or even decide to stop uh, the production of that particular product or stop the sales of that particular product or even come up with a new product for the same. So these are people who do research. People who do research within the organization will be working on KWS, that is the knowledge work systems. These are specialized people. This could be engineers, they could be analysts. This could, these are professional people within a particular field of study. So uh, the, these knowledge work systems will help knowledge workers in the creation and integration of new knowledge within the organization, especially in understanding a particular area, if it is a service or a particular product, and making decisions at the end of the day. Office automation systems, very simple. These are basically, they are not meant for uh, professional people, or you don't have to be a professional to use uh, office automation systems. These are basic applications. People will use word processing applications, email applications. At the end of the day, you want to use these applications to make decisions based on or to provide some platform for decision making. Word processing systems, uh, email systems, scheduling systems, and so on within the organization. So while you use word processing uh, spreadsheets within the organization, you are basically using what we call office automation uh, systems. As I have said, the knowledge level uh, within the organization is usually silent because we have talked about the, the top level, we have talked about the middle level and the operational level. Nobody mentioned the knowledge level, but it's important for us to take note that somewhere within the organization, somewhere within the organization, we also have the knowledge level information systems which fall under or which you can categorize them into KWS, that is uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge work systems or office automation systems. Remember, the first one, KWS, knowledge work systems, uh, for professionals in a particular field of study. For office automation systems, anyone can be able to use them. We also have the management information systems. Uh, you will find out that most people refer to their systems as MIS. MIS, MIS. The word MIS will come out every day. Nobody will be talking about TPS within the organization, DSS, ESS, and so on, or KWS. Most people will be talking about MIS. So basically, the MIS works within the middle level. It helps uh, in decision making within the middle level. And basically, it relies on the data that was collected within the transaction processing uh, system of the entire information system. So basically, the tactical level managers will rely on information that was captured within the operational level, the operational level within the organization. That is very important to note. So based on the levels, we have the strategic, we have the tactical and the operation. So after operational level, we have the tactical level. And therefore, we have the MIS uh, lying there. And therefore, this MIS, Management Information Systems, will always rely on the data that is collected within the transaction processing system. And therefore, it is critical to have the TPS within the organization. It is critical to have an entry point of data within the organization because all these other systems, the DSS, decision support systems, the executive support systems, the MIS, will rely on the data that is collected at the lower level. So basically, within the MIS, you can use the MIS management information system to summarize, uh, to summarize and report on the basic operations of the company. That is, data has been collected using the transaction processing system. You can now create reports or summarize this 
particular uh, data and generate information for the tactical manager. Generate reports for the tactical manager. So there are so many things that the MIS will provide that is based on the very a wide range of the transactions that have been made within the organization on a daily routine. And you can use at the middle level, you can use the MIS on routines. You can say after two weeks, we generate reports. After three weeks, we generate reports. After six months, we generate reports. So we are looking at the tactical manager, the looking at reports at a particular periods. So it is based on periods or periodic, uh, periodic uh, reports. You can say every six months we generate this report. The MIS generates this report. Every two weeks we generate, every one month and so on. It's not based on daily transactions. So the work of the MIS is not basically to give you daily transaction. That's not the main objective. Of course it can give you, yes, because you have uh, requested it to do an on-demand uh, report. So the MIS usually serves our managers interested in, uh, the, I think we have mentioned that, interested in weekly, monthly, or even yearly results, not day-to-day -day activities, very critical. But you can always query the system. If you want a particular report uh, for a particular day, you can still use the MIS uh, to query the reports for a particular day, if you are interested. So you can demand the MIS. You can create an on-demand report. We have decision support systems. We have decision support systems, which actually play a role within uh, uh, the middle level and the top level. So they can act as a, as a bridge, for example. But basically, their main role uh, is not just the bridge or to act as a bridge. The role of a DSS or decision support system is to create a sophisticated analytical models within the organization. And again, it's to support the unstructured decision making. So you can see we are coming uh, to the top level where we are talking about unstructured information. Unstructured information. So uh, the DSS will you come and analyze the data. So it has powerful uh, data analysis tools that can be able to create powerful uh, resources. We can also see that it brings in information from external sources. So it can be able to make decisions. It can be able to check uh, what are the current rates for a particular uh, product within the market. And of course, it can now allow us to make even changes within our own organization. We can now say, let's lower the price or let's increase because this particular system, DSS, Decision Support System, is able to capture information from outside the organization. So it is able to communicate with the outside world, unlike the MIS, which is just for within the organization. So it is a powerful uh, a type of information system for decision making, and it supports uh, semi-structured and structured uh, de uh, decision making. So it's very critical to note that. We also have the executive support uh, system, which now, this one is usually at the strategic level, at the top level within the organization. Basically, the ESS will incorporate data within the organization and even from the outside, from the outside uh, world. One thing about this ESS, it is commonly used by the top level management who just want to understand uh, uh, the events within the organization and how a particular, how, how the organization is actually moving in terms of uh, growth and so on. So this system, ESS, Executive Support System, can be able to give you summarized information from the MIS and the DSS. Okay, from the MIS and DSS. Remember. At the end of the day, we are also talking about transaction processing system at the data entry level. So uh, when you talk of MIS, remember we have transaction processing system because MIS relies on the transactions, the daily transactions. Now we are looking at a system that relies on MIS and decision support systems. 
Basically, such a system can give us even uh, very uh, powerful graphics, very powerful graphics. And remember, at the end of the day, the users at the top level do not need to understand so much about the, the technical related terms of uh, the system within the organization or how the uh, information systems uh, play around with the, within the organization. So basically they will use the most advanced graphics uh, software and can deliver graphs and data from many sources immediately to the senior act, uh, executives. So you can be able to present uh, in a meeting, you can be able to say in the next 15 years this is what we want. This is based on, uh, the, actually you can say for in the next 15 years, based on the current situations, this is where we will be. But we want to be here. So you can be able to make actually comparisons. The current trend and what, the, what the, uh, you as the senior top or the senior manager wants within the organization. So that you can now bring some maybe adjustments on, on the data. You can talk about uh, making uh, formulating new rules within the organization, changes within the organization, so that you can uh, change the growth, uh, the graph to fit in, the, the actual graph to fit in to the, to the expected uh, growth of the organization. So it is important to know that uh, this is commonly used at the top level to make decisions uh, that affect the future of the organization. This system can talk or can communicate with the external sources. It can be able to look into other industries, competition, competitors, and so on. Uh, talks around the world about the products and so on, and bring in decisions. So it is a smart system, we can say, an expert uh, system. So uh, for this particular uh, class, it is important for us to not that we have the six types of uh, information systems uh, based on the levels. So always relate the levels with the, uh, with the, the levels with the information systems. If it is the operational level, we talk of the transaction processing systems for daily operations, daily sales, selling a book, selling a pen in the supermarket, and so on. That's the transaction processing system making a payment in a bank, and so on. That is a transaction, daily transaction. Then we have the knowledge level information systems, where we talk of the knowledge work systems, office automation systems. Remember, the role of a knowledge work system is basically uh, to help uh, the specialists in a particular field to create new knowledge, to create new knowledge, so that we can be able to understand a particular product or how a particular product can be able to uh, to come in, for example, if it is a new product or if we can be able to change a new uh, an existing product and uh, make it improved, for example, or based on what is currently happening and also based on the competitors. We also have office automation systems within the knowledge level and uh, basic operations like using uh, word processing software, email systems, spreadsheets, daily operations that provide support within the organization, that provide, uh, that improve productivity, and so on. We will use office uh, systems or office automated uh, systems. We also have uh, decision support systems. Uh, we, uh, we also have the MIS and the decision support systems, which serve the tactical level or the middle level within the organization. Remember the DSS can still play a, a role in the strategic level. So it is very important to take note of that. We have uh, the MIS we have mentioned, very critical within the organization, DSS for decision makings. And remember all these systems will rely, with, will rely uh, on the information or the data that was captured here. So if there is nothing happening here, then we know that everything within the organization is flat. There is nothing to talk about within the organization. If there is no transaction that is happening on a daily basis, then we know that there is nothing in that organization. We cannot even make decisions because we don't have data. We have the executive support system that plays a role in the 
at the top level, at the top level of the uh, organization. So take note, there is a relationship between the levels of management or management levels and information systems. Each information system has a means of fitting in to a particular level within the organization based on the operations that are being done or based on the activities or the roles of the management levels, whether it is a senior manager, a middle-level manager, or a operational level manager. The tactical managers are at the middle level, of course. We have the strategic managers at the top and the operational managers at the lower level. So always relate, always relate uh, the transaction uh, processing systems with operational level uh, systems, relate the, the office automation systems and uh, KWS, that is a uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge work systems with the knowledge level, which I have said is usually silent, is usually silent. Uh, most of their work does not affect uh, the DSS or the MIS or the ESS, but they'll chip in to information, uh, to decision making, to information, uh, that is to decision making. We also have the DSS and MIS and ESS. So play around with them and that gives us a means of uh, playing around with some assignment. So with, for this assignment, I would like you to identify and analyze an organization of your own choosing. Choose an organization and a structured organization, an organization that has a structure within, uh, within uh, any domain of your choice, whether it is a banking, uh, communication, industry, medical industry, learning, and university, and so on. So identify and analyze an organization of your own choice and describes its levels of management. That is the first item. Go further and describe the types of information systems they use. So the different levels and the, uh, and the information systems within that particular uh, organization. So uh, that marks the end of this class, and we meet in our next uh, session. Uh, thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era, and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.